Good day and welcome back. We'll talk about nuclear reaction. This video will include about the important points about the nucleus, such as the mass defect, binding energy, and also the nuclear reaction. Before we talk further about this, there are a few notes to tag. First is about the discovery of proton and neutron, which is found by Ernest Rutherford and Jens Chadwick. Next is about the mass defect. We compare the mass of nucleus with the mass of separated nucleons, which include the neutron and proton. The mass is never the same that the mass of separated nucleon is always the greater one. The difference between them is known as the mass defect, which could be explained by the existence of nuclear force that bind all the proton and neutron together in the nucleus. Imagine if we have a few protons inside the nucleus, there will be repulsion force between the protons because they are light charges. So there must be nuclear force that counter the electrostatic force between the nucleons. Then, according to Einstein theory, which is about the equivalence between the mass and the energy that gives us the equation E equal to mc squared, the mass defect is linked to the binding energy which is associated with the nuclear force. To define binding energy, it is the energy required to break up a nucleus completely. In summary, if we are given with the information about an atom, we can calculate the mass defect simply by adding the mass of separated nucleons, which include the total mass of proton and neutrons, and then minus the mass of nucleus. For binding energy, just apply the equation E equal to mc squared. Let's try to pass it in 2015. What is the binding energy of Hg nucleus? The atomic mass given in the question 201.970617U is the mass of the nucleus. Next is to obtain the mass defect by getting the total mass of separated nucleons minus the mass of nucleus. Up to this point, the mass defect is 1.712513U. So before we talk further, let's briefly discuss the U, which is known as atomic mass unit. We shall roughly discuss the derivation on how to get the value of mass and binding energy equivalent to one atomic mass unit or one U. Fundamentally, it is 1 over 12 of the mass of a carbon-12 atom and the mass of one more of carbon-12 is 12 gram. Based on the definition, the mass of one atomic mass unit is 1 over 12 multiplied by the mass of one more of carbon-12, which is 0 0.012 kg, and then divided by the Avogadro number. Hence, this is the equivalent mass of one U. In terms of energy which could be related with E equal to mc squared, just use the value of mass of 10 and multiply c squared, and we can obtain the equivalent energy of 1u, which is around 933 MeV. So sometimes the question will give you another conversion value, just follow the conversion given. In this case, 1u is equivalent to 934 MeV. To get the binding energy, we just convert the mass defect to the energy that delta m multiply 934, which is about 1600 MeV. To obtain binding energy per nucleon, just divide the value with the nucleon number 202 and the answer for this question is 7.92 MeV. So now we discuss what is about the binding energy per nucleon. It is the energy per nucleon needed to completely break up a nucleus. It is a measure of stability. If we need higher energy to break a nucleon, means that the nucleon has higher binding energy per nucleon. It means the nucleus is more stable and it is at lower energy step. So this is the general graph for the binding energy per nucleon versus the nucleon number or the mass number. Basically, we could see lighter nuclei with small nucleon number has very low binding energy per nucleon. They are not stable and tend to undergo fusion to form a heavier and more stable nuclei. And then if we observe the nucleon number that is more than 80, the binding energy per nucleon is decreasing, indicates that the atom is getting more unstable. Hence, Thus, heavy nuclei has higher tendency to undergo fission to split into two or more lighter nuclei so that they are more stable in that case. So actually, we have learned about fission and fusion in SPM. Let's just briefly talk about them. First is the nuclear fission where a heavy nucleus is split into two or more smaller nuclei. One of the examples is the uranium-235. A neutron is bombarded into the heavy uranium nucleus to produce two daughter nuclei, three neutrons, and some nuclear energy. Those three neutrons will continue to bombard other uranium nuclei, and so on. And this reaction is known as chain reaction, or also the continuous nuclear fission. There are two conditions for the chain reaction to occur that uranium should have sufficient high density, and the mass of uranium is more than a critical size. To sustain the density of uranium, there is a uranium rod in the nuclear reactor to supply the uranium-235. Now, we shall discuss how we can control the chain reaction inside a nuclear reactor. This is important as we can see more and more neutrons are produced in the chain reaction. If we allow this to happen without any control, nuclear explosion could occur. So the safety features are such as the control rod which is used to absorb the extra neutrons. Next is the moderator which is usually made of graphite 
or water to slow down the speed of neutron. Then it's the cooling agent to absorb the heat energy produced from the Chen reaction. Last but not really related to the nuclear reaction, we have a thick concrete wall to prevent any leakage from the reactor. Now, we shall also discuss the nuclear fusion where two smaller nuclei combine to form a bigger nucleus. They will need high temperature and high pressure to do so because that those nuclei will require high energy to overcome the electrostatic force when they are combined. One classic example is the proton-proton cycle which happen in the sun that give us a lot of energy every day. We shall discuss one past year question in 2018. We need to calculate the energy release in the nuclear fusion. This can be done by calculating the mass defect of the reaction or also the loss of mass after the reaction. This mass defect is different with the one in the beginning where we discussed about the binding energy of a nucleus and this time it is about the energy release in a reaction. First, we can calculate it by taking the total mass of the input nuclei minus the total mass of the nuclear product. And then, we apply the equation of E equal to mc squared and we can obtain the energy release is 17.64 MeV. Next, we shall also discuss another question in 2017. About the nuclear reaction, there is principle of conservation of nuclear number and charge or the proton number. Based on this question, we can look at both of them separately to form two equations. First, for nuclear number, we can solve the value of B which is equal to 5 in this case. The total number of nucleons is 236 and it should be constant during the nuclear fission. And as for proton, it should be conserved at 92 so we can obtain the value of A is 42 in this case. Here we shall discuss again on how to calculate the binding energy per nucleon. First step is to obtain the mass defect where the total mass of separated nucleons minus the mass of nucleus and this is equal to 1 for S718 U. To obtain the binding energy per nucleon, we convert the mass to energy using the conversion given in the question and then divided by the nucleon number. Finally, the answer is 7.42 MeV. Let's move on to third and fourth question. We are given with the binding energy per nucleon of Sn and Mo molecule and we can see that they have higher value compared to uranium. Based on our discussion, they have higher value of binding energy per nucleons means that they are more stable and at a lower energy state. Therefore, there is energy release in the reaction. Before we calculate the energy release, let us discuss also about the binding energy. Just now we have gone through on how we can calculate the energy release by calculating the mass defect of the reaction. However, we are not given with the value of mass in this question, so we need to look at binding energy instead. First, we shall review the formula of the mass defect of a nucleus which associated with the nuclear force that total mass of separated nucleon minus the mass of nucleus. We shall rearrange the equation that the mass of nucleus can be expressed as the total mass of separated nucleons minus the mass defect. So we will substitute this back into the equation and since the nucleon number is conserved, the total mass of separated nucleons should be equal and we can cancel both of them in the equation. Finally, we can see that total mass defect of nucleus after the reaction should be greater than that of before the reaction and this is associated with the binding energy. Probably a little bit confusing. We shall proceed first with the calculation. The binding energy can be obtained simply by binding energy per nucleon multiply the nucleon number. The total binding energy before is equal to 1743 MeV while the binding energy after the reaction is 1915 MeV. We could see that binding energy after the reaction is higher in the case that the mass defect of the reaction is positive, there is energy release in the nuclear fission. So to conclude about this question, it is a reaction where energy is released, also known as exotomic reaction. The total mass of nucleus should be decreased or the total binding energy of the nucleus should be increased after the reaction. The stability of the product should be higher and at a lower energy state. In the other way, if we have a reaction that absorbs energy instead, which is also known as endothermic reaction, thus comparison of mass or binding energy is the opposite way. And usually, we shall need to supply energy instead to make the reaction to occur. Before we end, let's discuss also the last question which is about the electricity production. The nuclear energy is converted to produce electricity at a certain efficiency. Based on the efficiency we define as the ratio of output power to input power, we need the reactor to produce an output power of 100 MW, hence the input power can be calculated by output power divided by the efficiency. And then we apply the equation of energy equal to PT, we can calculate the input energy needed. From previous calculation, we know that nuclear fission which involve one uranium-235 nucleus can produce 2.76 times 10 to the power of negative 11 joule. 
We can calculate the total uranium-235 nucleus needed by getting the total energy needed divided by the energy produced by one uranium nucleus. Then, we can convert the number of atoms to number of mole by dividing with Avogadro number, then multiply the molecular mass to obtain the total mass of uranium needed. So that is how we can solve the question. And similar question can be found in the past year, also in the year 2018, question 17. So that's all for my discussion today. If you still have any question, leave it in the comment section below. Thank you.